going to be coming around? With some- uh, well, they have a beverage cart going around, and then down below there's breakfast burritos and oh. some uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. And then the restaurant opens at 11. There's a spa. It's a place to get your hair cut here. There's a lot of amenities, too, besides golf. So. Yeah, I saw that. Out. It was spa and stuff like that on the signs coming in. Yes, the homes are just gorgeous around here. Yes. So uh, let me get out of the way, and I'll tell the folks a little bit more while we got a, a paying patron here ready to tee off. But uh, you can see this pro shop is beautiful, and I want to thank Mr. Adam for appearing on the channel. Uh, and he is uh, happy to take care of you. He obliged me with a very good rate because I'm staying in one of the casinos. If you're a resident here, too, there's another special rate that you get if you live in uh, Mojave County or even in uh, Laughlin, Nevada. But grab yourself a nice shirt. You got tees and balls and shoes. It's just a beautiful golf. This is a, a top-tier golf course, beautiful homes on it. And like he said, is a- yeah, 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 Tim, we get it. You're, you're, you're trying to get like some free like stuff from the golf store and you are hoping that you can get like a marketing thing together and maybe they'll buy you a coffee. Who knows? Hey, everyone. It's Ray. It's Life and Vibe. And we are going to cover Tim's day today. I wanted to thank everybody who was new to the channel who has subscribed and who has been enjoying my observations on our friend Cowboy Tim, Sarasota Tim, Dim Tim. There are so many names that come along with him. And I just wanted to be able to catch up with his day today because we know Tim's a busy guy. He's got a lot going on. But before we do that, uh, that was just a highlight from his golf visit today. And he managed to put out an hour-long video about his golfing adventure at the Laughlin Ranch Golf Club. It was 57 minutes of Tim playing golf on his own. Um, and uh, wishing that he had someone to uh, film him as he made his wonderful putts and drives down the golf course. Because as we know, it's all about Tim at the end of the day. But let me just get out my fair use and all my disclaimers because we don't need Tim coming after me, chasing after me, trying to take my videos down when I'm just out here doing information and educational information. But uh, yeah, so yeah, there's my fair use. This is uh, going to be broken up, Tim, not stealing your content and making commentary about your content, especially today because you put out another social security video. So we're definitely going to be talking about that one. And this, as a disclaimer, obviously, this video is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions. This is my commentary. It is possible that I could roast Tim along the way. But you know what? We know that uh, sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. And we may be ending up going there. And I certainly do recommend that if you do have funny comments, put them in my uh, comment box down below. Because I love to I love to read it. Love to read it. And, you know, and since Tim's going for 100,000 subs, let me go for at least 10,000. So, yeah, if you like this type of content, you know, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. I love it. I love to interact with people. So, anyway, gosh, I'm going to need a sip of fluid. I can already tell I'm, I'm getting a little bit parched over here. Apologies. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, my gosh. So, Tim has me so inspired. Um. I actually, in honor of Tim today, and since I found out that I am headed back to graduate school, I am training to be a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. I've got about years left until I graduate. And so I do find people like Tim interesting as far as a case study. I do not treat or diagnose anybody in this channel. And like I said, these are just my observations and my opinions only. But Tim, Tim inspired me today, man. So I actually um, went out, and thanks to Tim, I've started. Guess what? Look at this. I, I I got my own buy me a coffee going on here. So you know, I I am so excited, and I will make sure that I drop that link down below. So if you want to come in and uh, buy me a coffee, um, then you can absolutely do that. I would be so excited for that. So, yeah, thank you, Tim, for that idea and suggestion. 
I'm learning how to be a proper YouTuber now, thanks to you. <laughs> anyway, so as we know, Tim headed off, you know, to the to the golf club. He's been doing all sorts of fun stuff. So let's just take a look at Tim's day, and we're just going to take a quick peek see at any interesting things he did, which is probably nothing. Um, and let's take a look. What did Tim do today? Oh my goodness. Oh, he's only popped out four videos. So he's he's obviously, you know, not getting as much content out as usual. Um, we got a six-minute video of Tim cooking his breakfast this morning. Um, that's always fun. And so here we go. Tim is here. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Cowboy Tim. Get ready to drink some cowboy coffee. Making Dunkin' Donuts this morning. He's at it again. Fried eggs, sliced tomatoes, crispy, delicious. I get nervous seeing Tim in a in the RV in the morning now. Anytime he pans around anything, I'm scared I'm gonna get a vision of him in the, his birthday suit. Look at this. He's got some NyQuil out here. This is performative, isn't it? Trying to say, look at me, I don't feel good. Oh no, he says he feels good. And he got his NyQuil out here. Okay. Uh, bacon. Oh, four eggs. Well, this looks like a breakfast for uh, elevated cholesterol. Okay. All right, Tim. All right. So we see he's got, let's see what else he did here over here. So he poured his coffee. All right. Keep going, Tim. Man. Oh, shoot. I told you to lift the lid, Baker. Look what you did. Oh, you peckerhead. Well, it's probably because you only ever do anything with one hand because you got the camera always in the other hand. I mean, what do you expect, Tim? Jeez, look at the mess he's making over here. Well, he's got half and half, too. So he's had, look at all this. Tim, I hope you're on a statin medication, mate. Or at least you're getting your cholesterol levels checked because that salty bacon, that's just going to put your blood pressure up, mate. And then you've got four eggs. It's a lot of cholesterol. And then half and half. This is not a breakfast of champions, okay? Well, I guess he's like letting everyone know, buy me Dunkin' coffee, everyone. Buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee. God. Oh, gosh. Look at that. Now I got to wash this. Oh, no. Housework. Oh, that's good coffee. Respect. I mean, yesterday I had a spill where it came down the wall on the floor. Now I got that. Mm, okay. Oh, it's the best cup of coffee I've drank in my life. I got to go to the office this morning. They got some kind of weird charges. They're charging me on my rent. Some additional charge. I don't know if it's going to. That additional charge is probably for you flashing your neighbors. There's a, there's a $20 charge for being seen in the buff. Okay. So that might be what they're charging you for, Tim. Just be aware. Okay. Just be aware. Keep going. Fall off or it's a mistake or they overcharge me or whatever. I thought you were a financial wizard. So how are you not keeping track of your expenditures? It's listed there. <laughs> you know, it, it, Tim is definitely out here doing what we call uh, in the world of YouTube, some, some, some serious dry begging out here. Okay, and if you if you know what that is, then Tim is definitely out here dry begging, dry begging, Tim, dry begging. Ever, but I'll get to the bottom of it as soon as they open at eight, or after golf, whichever comes first. It probably will be after golf because I'm going to be getting the heck out of here and crushing it early this morning. There's a course uh, I want to play. And if you stay at a casino or at the RV park, you can get a good deal. You know, Tim is all about a deal. And I just wanted to correct myself. Tim is 65 years old. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. So this is how he starts this morning. Let's let's move him along because he's just cooking eggs. Let's see what else he complains about. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Can't take me anywhere. Mm. Get one of these. Um, 
Should I do this? Uh oh. Should I do this? Mm -hmm. I was getting worried with him by that reflective refrigerator door over there. Caution, Tim. We know what happens. At least you got your shorts on today. When you're in the West and you want a cowboy breakfast, get you some Louisiana hot sauce. Hey. Have you ever thought about just maybe getting a tripod and setting up the camera and, you know, getting it so that they, you could just be seen rather than you holding it and, and having to try to do everything one handed? It just seems like it's awkward and prone to having an accident and spilling shit. Pardon my French. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Okay. Stop. We won't be doing any more of this crap. Uh-oh. I am good. I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. Yeah, I don't need any more of that stuff. Mm. That little cough there you heard that probably won't be probably my last cough of the day. Okay. Just a typical All right. morning sad cough. Fishing. He's sad fishing at this point. Okay, he's looking for a new sugar mama. All right, let's see what else he does. Keep going. Oh, finally pulling the blinds down. You're, you're thinking of your neighbors and the sanctity of their eyes. Well, I'm glad for that. Keep going, Tim. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Let me put the TV on. Look Let's at this quality on. content here. Got that door open. Get the bacon smell out. He's never been living so large as he is in this this RV thing. Is this the one he? This isn't the one he bought, though, is it? I have no idea. I know he said it, the, the Flagstaff or whatever. I don't think he has that one. But this is pretty nice. I don't know if he's just staying in an RV. Part. I have no idea. <laughs> Fill me in, guys. We're going to grit. It only knows grit. Westerns, baby. Westerns crushing it. Oh. Really? Okay. All right, Tim. That's silly. Why would you just be sharing everything like that? All right, let's get back to whatever Tim got up to now. All right, Tim. Okay, so that was his morning. Then he gives us 57 seconds of on his way to golf. And we're not even going to look at that because that's, you know, just why? I mean, this and this, you're not even going to make money. It's not even long enough for YouTube's algorithm for them to put AdSense in. So why even bother with that? You needed this for eight minutes. We've looked at enough of this 57-minute video over here. Um, and he just, like I said, let's just go in real fast over here again just to see what he starts talking about as he plays on his own in the golf course. Let's just, you know, because. Two shots left to get in for a, a par because it's a par three. Well, the percentages were definitely not in my favor. So he gets a bogey, saves a bogey on the uh, par three there. So check it out. I had to go back there to the tee box and there's a turnaround spot. And that view I was showing you a minute ago, this is the hole I hit to. I hit, I hit the tee boxes back there on that plateau. Over here, you have to come back down the hill, follow the cart path. So yes, folks. Yeah. You are thinking correctly. We get 57 minutes of Tim playing golf by himself and complaining that he doesn't have anybody to film him. So this is Tim crushing it, everybody. He is he is living his, re his retirement dreams out here. He collected his Social Security at 62. He's a financial whiz, and he's going to tell us all about it as well. So... Let's get over to that because, you know, Tim has to go back to Tim. You're never going to get anything with your SEO scores like that. You need to to, to figure out <laughs> how, to, how to search optimize your stuff over here. Okay. Um, anyway, Tim is going back to his staple content to, you know, he's taking us through his usual day. It's the coffee. It's a car ride. It's him doing something where he's supposedly crushing it. And then he gets to his uh, social security content because, you know, Tim, this is the one that brought him 
all the views initially to his channel got everybody had him in their suggested feed this is how everybody discovered him was because of his rhetoric his narrative on social security now tim has no financial background in fact there have been cases where individuals who followed his advice and felt inspired by him have realized that it really was not good advice and a lot of the things that he was showing with the purchasing of the vehicles and so forth this was all from alleged money well he talks about it quite openly about how he had loans for his business that was closed during covid and received a large amount of eidl loans uh almost up to sixty thousand dollars is what is being alleged and with that money tim did the car salesman thing and bought depreciating assets basically toys cars rvs suvs motorcycles just toys toys that uh do not require probably property tax in florida where they would require property tax like say here in virginia and he just buys depreciating assets so he's paying interest on a loan and will be paying for that loan longer than he probably will own the items that are in his possession. So for all the people that think he just magic, you know, that I think he had convinced people that he was able to acquire these things while living on a very small amount of social security. And what people started to realize is that he's full of it. Anyway, he decided to, you know, once again, put out this video about social security so let's take a look and then i wanted to bring up somebody who was actually a former social security manager with a phd and letting people know that the what the full age to actually collect retirement is just a little bit from him just to counteract this gentleman because he's he's always hoping now he hasn't had as many views on this he's got what let me just go back real fast he has uh less than two thousand views in four hours um somebody finally managed to get in here before tim starts sanitizing his comments <laughs> he said people that listen to him need to go in, out and buy a tent that is where you're going to end up living in don't forget the five gallon bucket to poop in <laughs> and somebody else wanted to let them know Social Security keeps $1 for every $2 you make on your side hustle. Might as well wait until you're done working permanently. Well, Tim, Tim, of course, we know, didn't have that issue. And he says, not true. You can keep all of your Social Security unless you go over your earnings limit. You can make $23,000 almost before you got to worry about that. Really? You can make quite a bit more if you're a 1099 person because it's only based on your AGI gross, adjusted gross income. You got to be smart. And then someone said, Mike, do your homework. You need to read up. <laughs> and somebody else says, I just repaid over 20 grand for the 10 months of social security I took at 62. Since on June 3rd, I'm going back to the office after 13 months of retirement and I filed to withdraw my benefits. <laughs> it's like all these other people are basically like, if you crush it from age 20 to 50, investing and retire in your 50s, you never need a side hustle. I'm 52, did, did 30 military, I'm at 7K a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim's going to hate you. Tim doesn't like anybody else who's got assets or 401ks or 401s, as he calls them. Um, investments, property, you know, anything that's actually an asset. Tim doesn't like that. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't work in the Tim code of finance. <laughs> All right, Tim. Uh, we're probably not going to listen to all this. Uh, we're just going to listen to a little bit of what this is. But this is just a hint of Tim, Tim's videos and how his views are just desperately falling at this time. All right, Tim, take it away with your terrible Social Security advice. Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? My name is Tim. You're watching 
Sarasota Tim YouTube. I am the king of the Social Security YouTube videos, and I've got a few of them. It's got a couple of million views each, and I got the uh, yeah YouTube. You got a lot to answer to about pushing this one up the algorithm. <laughs> you you created a a, a whole thing after. Because Tim didn't know what to do with all that YouTube coin. Uh, it's, you know, and now he's 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 realized that you're not a social security expert like the former manager of social security who we're going to take a look at, who should be the one getting millions of views. I mean, he still gets good views, but nothing like Tim. Because Tim was, you know, running on a cult of personality and just giving out terrible advice at a time when people were, you know, feeling really tired. Oh, Tim lucky streak on getting all those views because it during lucky. the pandemic, a lot of baby boomers like myself, I'm 65 years old, were put out of work. They had jobs. They were going to keep working. And then their companies went out of business. So they didn't know what to do. Well, Tim, that wasn't your case though, was it? Because supposedly you'd only been working two to three hours a day, two to three days a week. And I believe the business you had was like one of those weird coupon type businesses they used to have years ago that people would somehow get these deals with uh, sports bars, pizza restaurants, and all of these different types of entertainment locations. And they would group them together to these like discount coupon books with firstly these really great discount deals. And it would be hundreds of dollars of like deals in the coupon book and you could buy the coupon book from individuals like Tim for like $20 or $30 or whatever the deal was. So basically they would make relationships with these businesses. There was like a whole business about this, especially in the early like 2000s, late 1990s, I want to say. And so people would come to your house and say, hey, do you want to buy you know, these coupon books, these are all local businesses. This is legitimate. And it, they were legitimate, you know, local businesses. And it would be maybe a hundred dollars worth of savings to all these entertainment places. And you could get the coupon book for say $30. So you could save $70. So if you were somebody who was really going to go get the pizza, go to these different locations, it would be a pretty good deal. But for most people, you know, you're not probably going out like that. But that's kind of how that worked. And I believe that's what Tim had done in the past. It was a little sketchy, you know. But uh, he's definitely always been the salesman shtick. And he continues it because he was a car salesman too. And uh, so he continues that kind of cult of personality, that charisma, that sales technique, all of it. It's all coming through. And it's very you know, indicative of that sort of, you know, fast sales game that often goes along with people like Tim who worked in those types of industries. Should they get a different job, change their career, or maybe consider getting their Social Security? And a lot of people actually didn't even realize that they could collect Social Security as early as 62. People always hear about 65 and Medicare, or they, they know about 62, but they want to wait till 65 I think it's actually, and we're going to listen to the social security expert. It's getting later. So just, you know, I mean, we're living longer. And so we are obviously knowing that 62 is still an age where if you are in pretty good health, you could quite easily work another decade without it being anything that of, of, of total burden if you're if you have good health i certainly have myself worked night shifts three nights in a row doing 12 hour shifts with other nurses who are 72 years old and were working on the floor with me so i've worked with nurses in their 70s on the floor still working full time tim but i guess they're just prisoners because you know tim thinks a job's a prison Oh, he was talking about that all day when he was out on the golf course. We're all prisoners to jobs, you know. Well, I'm just a graduate student at the moment again, Tim. So I'm just a full-time student at this time because I've worked and now I'm trying to finish my graduate studies so I can continue with my career as a nurse practitioner. But, you know, 
<laughs> those career things. Oh, who wants that? <laughs> so they can have insurance. They don't want to go without health insurance. No. And so all these reasons have kept people. Right. You, especially in your early 60s. Okay. Or any around any of these ages, even in my age. No, you don't really want to be without health insurance. It's 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 a little bit more um, difficult when you're older to think that you could just put these health things to the side because they just can't. And it, it's just a little bit more important. But you were somebody who didn't even buy insurance, health insurance for your kids when you were working age. So you just have no respect for any of this. And you're out here giving advice. You, it, It's wild. When I used to hear you giving it, I was just like, who is this person? Who is listening to him? You're going to get yourself in a catastrophe if you listen to this gentleman. It's, you know, especially with the way America is now and the cost of living, you certainly don't want to be caught out on a minimal amount of money that's barely even paying rent for some places nowadays. And he doesn't own a home. Unless you count the RVs and campers, I guess. From collecting Social Security at the age of 62. Well, I'm here to dismiss all those myths that you should never, ever wait past your very first day. You can collect your free money. At 62 years old, three months. Uh, it was free money for you, Tim, because I understand that you're based off of your ex-wife's Social Security. So maybe for you, it's free money. But for the majority of us, if you take a look at your Social Security statement, you have been making contributions to Social Security. So I overpaid Social Security last year. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Am I getting my money back? Heck no. Uh, but I think it's because I had bonuses and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> besides the point, <laughs> it's, it's it's supposedly it's called Social Security insurance because you have been contributing to the insurance that you'll be protected in your old age. But it's just one of many legs of the retirement. You know, and retirement's even changing because we're living longer. So things are changing a little bit. I mean, I'm the generation below you at Generation X, you know, but uh, I can't even think about it. You know, I'm I'm in, I'm thinking about the next stage of my career at this time because I've gained so much experience and knowledge and I'm in a place where for me professionally, that's beneficial. So why would I want to pull out of my career? These are the, my best years. <laughs> well, I've gotten all my knowledge together. Why would I want to lose that now? Months before you turn 62, you need to be on the phone, you need to be online, and you need to be putting in your name to get your first deposit on your 62nd plus 60 days birthday. That's right. You got to apply three months before. You've got to be 62 and 30 days old just to get it. And then you got to wait 30 days for that first deposit. So 60 days, two months after. Are you explaining to everybody here they're not going to be getting their full Social Security benefits? And how much, you know, I mean, you always want to talk about calculating all these years of, of income. But I don't think that really is the best benefit of Social Security. You know what? Let's go over to this guy who's the former Social Security manager real quick. Um, and let's see what he, he says real fast. And then we'll finish out with Tim. Just because this is probably not great advice. So I just want to hear what somebody who is in the business says. So this is Dr. Ed Weir. You know, obviously, you know, he has a PhD and former Social Security manager and has helped millions of people navigate the complexities of retirement and Social Security. But he's not Tim, okay? So this guy, not the expert that Tim is. <laughs> so we're going to bring up this non-expert here, um, this gentleman, Dr. Ed Weir, um, who is saying, why not take Social Security at 65? Okay, Tim over here at 62. Let's hear what Dr. Weir has to say real quick. All of their, uh, you know, their goals. And so we'll talk about those 
Um, and so one of the reasons not to retire at um, 65 is there's still a lot of people out there that think 65 is the full retirement age. Even though Medicare, you have to sign up at 65, and we'll talk about Medicare towards the end here, but in terms of retirement, 65, that changed, uh, you know, they passed the law in the 1980s, early 1980s, and they've been slowly increasing it ever since. So let me go ahead and pop up the chart here real quick. And let me get rid of uh, my little stuff at the bottom so you can see it. And I apologize, uh, the people on TikTok. Uh, listen, listen to Dr. Talk to, talk to Ed here. Apologizing to his TikTok audience. I <laughs> love it. Do you see? It, you, you can still be an older person and be very aware of the technology happening, okay? Now, this is interesting because he actually, you know, puts the years here. And how old would you be? Um, and then a thousand dollar retirement benefit would be reduced to, and then you know, at age 62. So he's talking about the age 62, uh, reduced how much this retirement is reduced by. So, look, the, 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 the further we go in, in ages up here, look, we're only at 1959. You're reduced by almost thirty percent if you uh, leave out at sixty-two. So all of these spousal benefits, all of this stuff, and obviously, Mister uh, Tim is the spouse benefit. Look at the amount of reduction. This is huge. This is a third of your benefit here. This is wild, wild wild um i uh i i guess i need ten thousand subscribers to do it correctly so if you could subscribe on TikTok, that'd be great and that way you can see all the the, the screens and my images and everything but uh, everybody else should be able to see it okay all right so if you were born in 1957 your full retirement age is 66 and six months if you were born in 1959 then your full retirement age is 66 and 10 months. And then it also gives the, uh, the reduction. And so if you retire early at 62 years old um, and you were born after 1960, $1,000, um, if your primary insurance amount is $1,000, you would only get $700. So it's a 30% reduction. If your full retirement age is 67 and you retire at 62, then there's a 30% reduction. And it also, the, the, the chart I'm throwing up here also gives the reduction in terms of spouse benefits. Look at that. See, Tim out here just telling everyone to go and get their money. I think if you're, he's 65 at the moment. So he turned 65 at the end of December. I will be 55 this year. So that means that if Tim, he was born in, then would that make him 1955? God, my mouth seems terrible. <laughs> but I think that puts him at 1955 in order for him to be 65. I think, am I right? I want to say yes, and I want to say no, because I, but I think I'm... Okay, I was born in 69. He would have been born in 58 then. So he's 1958. Okay. God. It took me a minute to get there. Oh, Lord. So he's, he really, okay, because I'm 69. He would have been born right at the end of 1958. So he would have needed to be um, 66 and 10 months to have received his full uh, spouse benefit. And because he decided to uh, take it out early, um, it's like 33% he lost in money. Just a fair amount. And I know he says he's all of these extra years, but calculate, you know, four years and that much and see if it works out that he's like, and then he's always going to be reduced. So all these other years, 
people are going to be getting more money throughout more years after because Tim couldn't wait four years to get his retirement. So he's lost a lot. I mean, that's a huge percentage there. Huge. Wow. Okay, keep going. Interesting uh, gentleman here. I'm learning more about Social Security. I'm not so in the, in the future, if you're watching this uh, after we've done the live, you can just go ahead and pause it there and, uh, um, you know, check out how much yours is going to be reduced. All right. Um, and I'm going to be doing another video in the next few days that shows you how to calculate specifically spouse benefits. OK. All right. So. Um, so make sure you watch out for that, subscribe for that. And so what generally this gentleman is, is trying to say is that uh, you really are not even in full retirement until you're 66. So Tim here is encouraging people to go four years or some earlier and end up, these people will end up losing 30 some percent of their, cause it's obviously the later, you know, they're we're going, you know, the later your birth date, the more decrease you're going to have if you continue to want to take it earlier. So it's like 30 some percent, remember, reduced. So imagine waiting for another 10 years. You know, I, I think, you know, you can't compound, I think, the interest the way they raise Social Security. So you're, he's like for those four years, He's decided to lose 30%. And then going forward, once he hits 66, which will be this coming end of this year, he's always going to stay reduced. And everybody else who waited to that 66 will get the full benefits with that extra 30%. And, and going forward, which could be for multiple decades after. You know, people, I've been working with patients and have helped you know, have easily worked with patients in their 90s, in their hundreds. So we're talking about another good 30, 40 years potentially. So that, if you add that up over time, just waiting to get those couple of years extra for such a small amount of money, it, it doesn't seem worth it to me. But he continues to give this advice. And I know that if you have to, because of disability or health, then obviously, I think it's great. Or if you're in a financial place because you have the rest of your legs and the social security is just kind of a little bit of a, a, you know, a cherry on top, then that's a whole different story. But Tim doesn't have anything. And the people probably listening to him are probably potentially in similar situations. So this guy is just giving the worst effing advice out there. All right, well, listen to a little bit more of his nonsense and I'm going to finish up this video because <laughs> I don't want to get too long on it. Um, but yeah. This is just scary and uh, really shouldn't be encouraged. And I'm glad the views are dropping. And the fact that Dr. Weir can only get under 200,000 on really important information where he really details it. And then Tim out here just selling a fake dream, you know, it just shows you where charisma and cult of personality can get you so much further. And then YouTube just happens to pick up on the algorithm. They don't know what they're picking up. It's just an algorithm, pick something up. And Tim just, I mean, he couldn't believe it when he got all those views, over 2 million views. But now I think people are realizing it's just awful advice. Everyone had always said it was terrible advice, but he's he's like, he's still putting it out here. It's not worth it, he says. Well, that's not what I'm seeing from the old social security manager looking at those numbers, 30 some percent. That's a pretty big chunk, sweetheart. That's a big chunk of money to lose. You turn 62 will, will be the soonest you'll be able to get any money. So that already is annoying enough to wait. All this waiting about 65 for insurance or uh, Medicare for 65. Dr. Weir is going to talk about that at the end. And I'm going to link his video so you can find it. Um, that's Medicare. And then it's, it's over 66 for full Social Security term because we're living longer now. And maybe you didn't follow with your doctors regularly, but most of us are still in pretty good health at this age. There's still a lot of people who actually, you know, did worry to take care about their health, their dental visits and all of these things. 
But those are the people you hate on. You know, and you openly hate on us on YouTube. More money or 67, what they call full retirement age or this 70 business where you're almost dead. Forget it. Let me tell you why you need to get it at 62. Number one, no matter how much your check is going to be, no matter how much or how little you get, it's pretty negligible between the most. No, I'm sorry. If you're looking at 30 some percent and you're thinking, okay, I've decided that I want to take this money four years earlier and I'm going to have it always at a reduced 30 percent. Always. And so you add up that little bit of money and then you think going forward, you're always going to be less than that moving ahead. So over time, no, you're going to lose money on this idea. It's a huge difference. So, so Tim, you, you have to understand people aren't old at 66. So maybe it's your mindset that needs to change. Lots of healthy people out there at 66. I mean, lots of, I know lots of people who are doctors and practitioners who are working well into their 60s and 70s. Many attorneys. Shoot, look at half the politicians we have. Look at who's running for president. And the least. Now, that's not exactly true. If you never worked or paid taxes and, you know, you don't have any pretty good earning years, it's based on your best 35 earning years. Uh, I get $1,700 a month. And uh, I think I know somebody that gets $2,500 a month. They were a huge earner, like every year. But that's really an extreme. Uh, at 62, get not really. <laughs> I mean, if you've had a career and you've been making good money over time, Social Security starts to see and it averages it out, you know? And so it's actually better to go a little older because these are your best earning years often. This is when you're at the height of your careers often. This is when your knowledge and professionalism is being rewarded for your work. So these are often, these are your best earning years. And so you're, you're telling people to come out of the years when they could be in their highest managerial positions. They wouldn't listen to you anyway, Tim, okay? You're, 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 but you are so off on your numbers, mate. <laughs> Bad advice. I'd love to have you sit down with Dr. Weir. Have a debate. <laughs> Getting 2500 man, if you can do that, you definitely want to cash out. But I cashed out. Not if you're then thinking, okay, and then I'm going to take 30% less of 2500 You know, or sorry, whatever, 2500 is 35% less than what I would have been getting. No, that doesn't sound like a good deal. Unless, you know, this person really was able, put through their, their own volition, able to retire because of their own assets. And then they just happen to be collecting Social Security because, you know, for them, that is a bonus. Well, there are people where that happens, Tim, but that's not you and that's not the audience that you're trying to sell this idea to. I'm glad your views are taking on this. I'm glad that people are starting to understand where this is not, if you are in good health, and this is not good info. This is not good advice, in my professional, personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm in the healthcare business, but I also know that to stay feeling young, work often. People miss work. People miss the opportunity to contribute and do things. For a lot of people, work is what keeps them feeling young, and for Tim, it's it's like a nightmare. It's prison to him. But he's alone, bored, playing on a golf course. So he's not interacting and really meeting people, which you get to do when you have a really good career. With my, it was actually only about 1550. That's my I remember a couple of years ago, Social Security for the first time in 40 years got the biggest increase of 8.7% after the pandemic because, pandemic because of inflation. And it went up like 150 bucks for about everybody. So it was a welcome bonus. But then again, it's been eaten away by inflation. Now, Social Security is not going to support you. 
Social Security is your grub stake. Social Security is your guarantee every month to cover your overhead, like your rent, your mortgage, uh, and a car. Uh, most people, hopefully, will be out of their mortgages by the time they retire. That would be the best way to do it so you don't get stuck with a lot of, you know, bills to pay. Um, uh, so what advice are you giving? Why are you telling people to take the money early if they're still going to have to work a side hustle? So this is contradictory advice, Tim. I'm just saying. Keep going. A payment, maybe. Or your food and your roof over your head. It's that grub stake that you get a free life for the rest of your life that you're not going to go hungry and you're going to be able to put a roof over your head. The rest of the things that you're going to... That's not what people are saying in your comments. Like Some people have said that they've withdrawn... They've returned the money back to Social Security and they've gone back to work because the cost of living at the moment, $1,700, Tim, you know, we all know, well, you were living out in a camper, uh, wouldn't cover anything, barely. It uh, barely covers what people want for, for a rent payment. And if you're an older person and say you, you're now living alone, that's a very big chunk of change. You're certainly not going to be paying a lot of people's mortgage payments or even a call or the insurances. $1,700, unfortunately, does not go where it used to go. I used to have it when I saw some old accounts of mine. And $1,700, $1,800 a month, I was paying for everything, including my mortgage, condo fees, bills, uh, car payments, you name it. And I was paying it on, le uh, on less than $2,000 a month. But now it's like double that. <laughs> I still have the same house. Different call. <sighs> I'm just saying, obviously, you know, and though Social Security doesn't always keep pace with, with inflation, $1,700 a month doesn't sound like much, Tim. That sounds like a weekly payment for some weeks pay after taxes for some people and benefits. I'm just saying. It's expensive nowadays. You don't want to be caught out as an elderly person with no money and thinking you could be homeless. It's terrible advice, Tim. Pay for uh, supporting a car, uh, insurance, uh, food. Well, not food, but um, uh, any other incidentals, you know, clothing, those kinds of things. Things you cannot avoid that are going to be a cost. You need to have a side hustle. So, yes, you have to work. But instead of going from 40. <laughs> well, Tim, you never worked 40 hours a week. So you, you've quite clearly said you've worked two or three days a week, two or three hours a day. You've never even known what a 40 hour week feels like. And you're trying to tell people who are probably, you know, maybe having health issues that it's an easy road out of there. That's terrible advice. And then you show how you sink your money into depreciating assets, I mean, cars and stuff. Be mm. 50 hours a week that you did 40 or 50 years, 30 or 40 years, all your life, weekends, nights, all this crap. Get out of that and get yourself a little part time side hustle. <laughs> Either work yeah, because that's what every person who's had a career their whole life wants to do is get early social security and work a side hustle for the rest of their lives. No, I think most people rather have a good career up until their 70s that they enjoy on the most part. A lot of people enjoy going to work and, and, and having conversations with their colleagues. They find it, they they feel like once they don't have the work anymore and they're retired, they feel like their purpose has changed. But, you know, Tim has this purpose out here to lie to poor people on YouTube. <laughs> for yourself, or you can make good coin, a 1099, and you write your own ticket. Or if you want to be a W-2 worker and you want to get a job. What happens when you're 80 and you're down 30-some percent on your Social Security? And you don't feel like doing a side hustle anymore. It doesn't sound like much of retirement to me, Tim. Okay, it sounds like you're still going to have to stress about money. Not that people, are, most of us aren't going to have to stress about money. But I'm just saying. 
I don't think this is good advice. The fact that you don't even have a home paid off when you entered into this or paid off assets so you know you have something or some equity or something there. Oh, you act angry towards people who have anything like that. Stocks, assets, investments, 401ks, you know, careers, degrees. I mean, all of the, we're terrible people. We all should just be, you know, slinging samples at a store and getting social security at 62. Living Tim's dream. Uh, answering the phone, a greeter at Walmart, work at Target. These places are paying $15, $18 per hour now. All you got to work is, you know, 20, 25 hours a week, and you're making equal to what your Social Security is. Now, if you're getting the Social Security, with that, you're making equal to what you were making. I'd rather work part-time uh, working as a mental health psychiatric nurse practitioner actually in practice that would be better for me than you know working at a, than a walmart greeter so i just think i'll stick on my route in grad school at this time you know not much younger than tim and yet i'm in grad school i'm really i'm only a decade younger than he is i feel like i'm a world away though in thought and and <laughs> actions and this is a generation tim you were very fortunate you had a lot of opportunity in the United States at this time to really build up some wealth, more than, than any generation probably since. And you squandered it. I mean, you absolutely squandered it with your laziness. While working. And work and while shy. you're working, you got no life. It, work shy Tim over here. Working, you got no life. What life do you have? You're out there playing golf alone. Okay? And, and flashing your neighbors in an RV camp. What life do you have, mate? Grifting people about your coffee. Oh, my coffee link's down in my description box too. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> All right, this is getting it's long. It's a prison job. I call them prison jobs because you got to be there. They're watching over your shoulder. They don't want you to waste any seconds of the day. They want to make sure that they get every dollar they can out of you for the eight or 10 hours you're there. Then they release you at four, five, six, seven o'clock or a weekend, if they make you come in, and they tell you, all right, go home, have a meal, get some shopping, pick up your kids, get your laundry, make your lunch, get a good night's sleep, and be back here tomorrow morning at 7.30, 8 a.m., whatever it is, and back at it. That is a prison. I don't care what you say. Anybody's got control over you like that, and that's you're giving them the best... I guess like Tim is just letting us know about all his fears and paranoias out here. <laughs> a lot of people don't think that feels like prison, Tim. A lot of people actually look forward to going to work sometimes. It's getting harder because our cities are getting bigger. There's more traffic. People are stressed. It isn't pleasant on the road sometimes. So yeah, the commute can be a drag. Honestly, the commute can be a drag. But for many of us, we get to work in fields and in areas that we enjoy, that we love, that we are passionate about. And so it doesn't feel like this to us. It's a pleasure. I enjoy studying. I enjoy working in healthcare. It's been my, just like my blessing, if you want to use that term, to be able to have that opportunity to do so. And for you to talk so poorly about you know, people who contribute to society and and try to make potentially the world a better place, you're really just mocking everybody. And we're the people who probably are supporting you because you really didn't contribute a lot. <laughs> you really are just a taker. The hours of your life, the best days, the best weeks and years of your life that you continue to not be free to go out and do what you want to do folks i'm 65 yeah but where, where's your freedom if you've also got you no know, money and you've borrowed huge amounts of loans that you don't have a career to really pay off so if you don't keep a side hustle and you don't keep getting money through youtube then you owe a big old loan on all these depreciating assets you bought. So why don't you talk about that financial advice, Tim? 
talking about jobs being a prison. When you enjoy it, it doesn't feel that way. At 62, I took my Social Security. I started passing out chicken nuggets. It wasn't and yours. It, well, I understand. It was like your ex-wife's uh, Social Security that you were claiming off of. And yeah, you slung chicken nuggets and you seemed happy, a happier person than you actually do now. But who knows if that was just an act. That's bow tie Tim days. And crackers at Publix grocery stores in Florida. And I was making not even as much as my Social Security was, but I was supplementing it. But the thing is, I had no debt. My, my, my secret to retiring on Social Security. And that's a fat lie because if you'll go in and, and see any of the videos about his EIDL loans, Tim owns almost $60,000 in loans. So he's not debt free. He's still paying a loan. So this is BS. Is you cannot have debt. You cannot have Netflix, car payments, lawnmower payments, Home Depot cards, Lowe's cards, uh, home security systems, mortgages, HOA payments, uh, all this stuff, you know, all of that crap. You cannot have that. You have to get rid of that years before you turn 62. I'm talking, you need to plan out five years minimum. Um, what is he talking? <laughs> He's like making out you're like an old person at 50 some and that you should already be planning for the grave. Tim, I'm 55 this year. Okay. I'm not planning like that. I'm planning on fin my, finishing my graduate studies. And hopefully by the time I'm 56, I'm, I'm, you know, into my full career as far as my nurse pract practice. In that respect, not that I've not already been an RN for over a decade, and I also have a teaching degree. So I, you know, spent years just obviously educating and working, and I still get excited about doing it. So why am I planning on this? It's like so far from my plans. It's definitely one foot in the grave over here, Tim. Just getting your car paid off, having a very good, reliable car that you have the title to. When I go from here to down to the Walmart in this truck and you drive a Maserati, what's the difference? We're both there. What does a car do? It takes you from point A to point B. Do you want to have to keep... Tim, you were like in some type of Toyota sedan type vehicle. God knows what you were driving before that. And I understand you had that through the EIDL loan. And then you upgraded over to this this RAV4 or whatever you're driving. So this is on borrowed money, sweetheart. Don't make out that you're like, did this on your own, okay? Nobody's going to believe that anybody drawing $1,700 a month and pushing chicken nuggets to the Publix paid off a $40,000 RAV4, okay? Because none of us, you know, none of us are that dim. We understand how it works. Those are expensive calls, sweetheart. Appreciating asset too. And you're still going to be paying on that loan long after that car has hit the scrap yield. That's not small. Keep working in a prison job so you can say you drive a Maserati. Nobody can see you in it because you're in your prison job all day. You know, you only get the weekend or one day off a week to go drive around and show everybody your Maserati. <laughs> now I'm being facetious, but look, you get out of debt. You get No, you're just being jealous. Keep going. Get rid of Netflix. You get rid of HOA. You sell that house. Why? You take your profits. You buy a small house. You get a condo, a villa. Uh, you you become a roommate. You you and your spouse, if you have a collaboration there, that's even better. You buy uh, no, not going to become somebody's roommate. Hopefully, <laughs> until I'm needed to have a roommate, I guess, because I'm just not well enough. But no, that doesn't sound like anything I want. I, I live in my condo with my dog, and, and she and I will keep it that way. Both got your Social Security. You get out of debt. You get down to one car. You don't have to be going to work. So all you need is one car. You go around together. If one needs to go to the store, the other one can sit at home and watch Grit TV and watch some Westerns for an hour while she or you go to the store. You don't need two cars for gas and insurance. What for? What for? You got to have more parking spots. If you guys want to go off somewhere 
on a vacation. Oh, this is minimalist Tim, okay? But he's got all this stuff sitting in the back of his car. I promise you, he'll spend more money on stuff. You know, he's just all talk. It's jealousy, too. Tim is just aching because Tim didn't get it right in his, his life. And now he's sitting at 65 in this situation. And he's trying to, he suddenly realized he got this money because he preached, you know, his own philosophy. He doesn't even understand the numbers behind it. Oh, dear. Station, okay, keep going. Just sits there. You can't drive two at the same time. You're not working. So you need one car, no debt, two social security checks coming in. Or if you're by yourself, get your own social security check. You have zero debt. And you pick up a little job, a little side hustle going 20. Why? Why can't I continue in my career that I enjoy? Why can't I do that? Why do I have to get a side hustle? 25 hours a week. You say, you know what? I'll work graveyard. I'll work uh, till 10 o'clock at night from starting from five or six. I'll work from four or five in the morning and get off at 10 a.m. I'll work from 10 in the morning to two in the afternoon. You pick what you want to do to make you sell, to make yourself some money. And you're picking up 15, 20 bucks minimum per hour. Or you actually have a skill set that you can paint, electrician, plumber, contractor, or one of these. You see, to me, you know, that doesn't sound like very much money. <laughs> Not for the cost of living nowadays. See, this is, you know. He just, Tim just wants other people doing Tim's terrible decisions along with Tim. You know, it sounds, it sounds great guys. Doesn't it? Just sounds real easy. I promise you. Nobody in their old age wants to be older age, you know, wants to be slinging chicken nuggets. Just Tim. <laughs> jobs, auto mechanic that you can do and you get you some customers and you can pick and choose your. Yeah. I think most auto mechanics are not trying to crawl under cars as they get older. Okay. So, yeah, that might be a nix from what I know from, from auto mechanics. But Tim doesn't have any skills. So he's just talking out as proverbial. Hours and name your own prices for your jobs and make a lot of money. That's that's totally a lot more than you can make working 20, 25 hours a week at 15 to 20 bucks an hour for a target. So you got no debt. You get this free money coming in every month. Your free check, your social security. Uh, yeah, that's irritating when he calls it free because we all know we've contributed through our social security insurance through our paychecks and the hefty amounts sometimes <laughs> and towards Medicare too and Medicaid and whatever. You see all that stuff. And when you make decent incomes, Tim, I can promise you a lot of it goes to that. I'm shocked sometimes when I was working as a nurse in the last few years, how much went to that. So, yeah, not great advice. Keep going with your terrible advice. It's terrible advice. Man. I call it a free check. Money you paid in. It's your money. The rest of your life. And that covers your, your rent or your mortgage and your food. You've got that covered. You're $1,700 a month. If that's what I was pulling on your social security, you wouldn't touch my bills, sadly. And I don't live expensive. It's just, just that's life nowadays. I mean, yes, would I, am I working to get that debt cleared? Absolutely. <laughs> but I still have a few years left. Living for free. You're eating and you got a roof <laughs> over your head. And if you've got a car that's paid off, as long as a man's got or a woman's got a, a full belly, a roof over their head, and a vehicle to drive, you're a rich person. Think about the people around the world that would just love, you know, to have what you have. And what about those people <laughs> sweating? What, what is he doing, too? I just realized that he's doing a 23-minute video outside a gas station. I guess nobody else needs the pump. What are you doing? Why are you spending 23 minutes at a gas station talking about social security, mate, in your car? 
<laughs> not all those bills for Netflix and cable TV to watch CNN oh, and Fox like six times. and all that garbage that just does nothing but put garbage in your head. There's nothing even worth watching. You can get free uh, TV with uh, uh, digital antenna and get the best channels in the world. They're all like. Yeah, and you can get it also for, from, from YouTube. Forget that, uh, Tim. Hey. HD, too. Uh, I, I, I love those. Also, um, another thing about the cable is, you know, you watch those uh, screws that are coming a Maserati. We got us a, one of them doors that open up like this on a, a Audi or something, right? A BMW. Fancy car. So she's got a prison job or she's got her a big bank account. Anyway. Oh, well, don't be jealous because some lady driving a nice car, Tim. Kim, Tim, you know, the car salesman, he's obsessed with everybody's cars. You know, maybe she has a successful business. Do you think about that? Oh, th that's killing Tim. Seeing a woman driving a nice car. Oh, she got to have a prison job. You know what? I have a lot of friends who have professional careers and they love what they do and they don't think of it as a prison job. They like their colleagues. They like their work. They like the, the rewards of it. They like to travel and go to conferences. There's, there's a lot of things. You meet a lot of interesting people. You collaborate with people. It's, 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 a professional career is very interesting and exciting, Tim. I guess you just never knew what that felt like. The uh, the cable TV you got to get rid of it. That's nothing but garbage. You don't need that stuff. Uh, these Netflixes and stuff. People say, "Oh, I don't have." I oh, here's what it is. Home. <coughs> I got it. Home. I thought that cough was cleared up, and you were having to put the Nyquil away. Sounds like the cough back, Tim. You're full of lies tonight. Internet. Oh. Do you realize you can get visible wireless, a Verizon-owned company? a wireless service that works on Verizon towers, like the best in the country for $25 a month. And what do you get? Unlimited talk, unlimited text, unlimited data and 5G data. And as a kicker, you can throw out, call up Frontier or whoever you got your home Wi-Fi with and cancel it. All that $100 a month you're paying between a cell phone and home internet. You can have what they call a hotspot with visible that's un. No, I'm just going to let you know that that's fine if you're just doing like your laptop and you need to, like, I use my personal hotspot on my phone. I don't pay anything extra for it. When I hook up my laptop, I will go hook up my iPhone to the laptop and I'll run my personal hotspot so I don't have to go into a public Wi Fi system. But I also used to travel with a personal hotspot and I used to use it for internet and I just had the personal hotspot. But I can promise you when you want to try to run your phone or you need to run uh, your laptop and you actually need to get into any real web browsing or using really anything on the internet, personal hotspots just not going to be able to take all of that data. It's just, it's, it's going to be a very slow service. So I used to have the, the ramped up personal hotspot when I used to travel as an RN. So I, I'm very aware of the hotspots and I have a little bit of a hotspot when I go to use my, um, like I said, my, my phone with my computer in public places. I always hook my phone into the computer and run my own hotspot. So I'm never on a public Wi-Fi. Otherwise it's, it's not good. And if people want to have Netflix, let's let them. Stop preaching to people what they can and cannot have in their homes or how and how they not should spend their money. They've worked for it. Let them spend it however they want. You've made terrible financial decisions in your life and you really have not a room to speak in, Tim. All right, keep giving terrible financial advice. This video is getting far too long. Limited. You push a button on your phone and when you walk in your house, you push a button on your phone and your smart TV, your laptop, your desktop, your iPad, whatever, receives the internet. You got a Wi-Fi signal. So you cancel all of that. I mean, folks, I have nothing but my cell phone, my truck's paid off, my camper's paid off. I have no...
Have you paid off that EIDL loan that you paid all that stuff off with? Is it really paid off though, Tim? Did you take the YouTube money and pay off that EIDL loan so you don't owe anything on that? Is that what you did with your YouTube money? Because then you would be debt free. Otherwise, you're full of lies. Because there's record of that loan that you took out, Tim Baker. There's record of it. So have you paid it off? Did you get enough money from YouTube from all those two plus million views on your social security videos that you paid off that loan back to the government and to the taxpayers of this country? Or are you just seeing that as free money too? Comment down below. No debts. I owe no nothing. Love and it. I get $1,700 a month and I'm making at least that. On my social, on my uh, side hustle, which is now YouTube, right? Because I got out of the public's. Right. So he's trying to say now he's making like seventeen hundred dollars a month on YouTube. So that's obviously through his Google AdSense. I don't know if he does channel memberships, but I've certainly saw in his coffee thing how many people have bought him coffees. Like some people have sent him like forty or 50, 50 coffees at five dollars a pop. That's a pretty fair sum of money. Hundreds of dollars for what I saw with one video from people. And he'll say that every YouTuber does it. And I put up my coffee thing as a joke, kind of. If you want to send me one, that's great. But, I mean, it's kind of just making fun of Tim, really. Um, but, yeah. So, that tells you. Well, I hope you're claiming it on your taxes. I hope Social Security knows. Because they're going to, you know, they're going to, you know, they they need to keep an eye. Make sure you're not, you know, going over the allowed amount. Better watch it out with that side hustle, Tim. You'll be owing. A cracker business, and my YouTube channel took off, and it's monetized. And so I get money from it. And now I'm just traveling around the country, living my life free, going anywhere I want. I don't even have to stick around 20 or 25 hours a week at Publix passing out crackers to people, which I would do if I didn't have YouTube. I enjoyed that. Or, you know, you if back. I had a skill set or if I wanted to help a buddy of mine in Florida, he used to do boat lift, boat elevator. Uh, <laughs> oh, Tim, I saw that video of you, mate, with that thing where you're trying to put something. It was terrible, terrible work. And he always needed a helper, like a, a, a laborer. He would ask me on the weekends, you know, and he paid me like two, three hundred dollars. You can make money like that on the side. To supplement yourself. Are you are you trying to tell people to get like some some money under the table that the government doesn't get to know about, Tim? Yeah, you better watch yourself there, mate. You can get yourself in trouble. Social security. Folks, people that don't have any debt, it doesn't matter if you don't make 10 grand a month. You don't need it. You're doing what you want to do. You don't have any bills. You got a hundred dollars in your pocket if you need it. Your gas tank's full. Your roof's over your head. That's been paid for by Social Security. You're eating. All right, so maybe you don't eat filet mignon. You eat salads, eat sandwiches, whatever. Be good to diet. Folks, you can do whatever you want to do. But what you need to do is consider one thing. This is the main thing of this video. <laughs> what good does it take? What good is it if you dis disagree with everything I've said and you're like, this guy's a fool. I'm going to work till I'm 70. I'm going to work till that 67, that full retirement age. And I'm going to get that five, six. It's 66 and however many months, depending on what year you were born. So at least get some facts right. That's what Dr. Weir said. $700 bigger check on my Social Security. whoop de do Five to $700 more money. Meanwhile, you waited five years of not collecting $1,700 every month. And you might've died. You might've gotten sick. A hundred thousand dollars more than that has came into my pocket, into my bank account while you're still working the prison job, waiting, paying taxes. Uh, wait yeah. And then as the years go on and those people are getting 30% more in their checks, just having waited a couple of years and Tim is destitute, who's going to be laughing then? Because at some point he's not going to be, you know, if he keeps eating all that cholesterol, you know, I hope you have money put aside in case you have a medical event. Who's going to be taking care of all this then? Have you thought about that?
I'm just saying. You're talking about everyone's going to be gone anyway. So have you already planned your funeral? Because you're only a few years out from your statistics, Tim. Waiting yeah. to get that $500, six, $700 more money. Now you get it. Now you're an old, older person. I'm 65. When I started at 62, I can tell I'm older. I got two more years before 67. And the way exponentially age is, is happening, uh, I can't imagine starting my life two years from now. I've already had three years of like total freedom. Well, Tim, you, you eat like not great. I'm just saying from a cardiology standpoint, having worked in cardiac for a long time, heart, heart care, basically. <laughs> I was a cardiac nurse. Um, that diet doesn't look great. And, uh, you know, you weren't somebody who seemingly, you know, you had a skin thing and you had to have like something with a dermatologist and you got funky eyes sometimes. And I don't think you've really had a lot of primary care. So you've not been somebody who's followed up with a doctor. So if you're feeling old, that's something on your end, sweetheart. I just can't even imagine if I have to wait two more years and I'm still working 40 hours a week for somebody and I haven't done and seen all the things I've been going around doing. And then by then, who knows how sick I could be or what I could contract or how my gizzards might be wore out or what kind of things could be happening to me, how much my joints are not working, how much more I'm slouched over, how much more my eyesight's no good, how much more my muscles are weak, how much more my mind and my attitude, and my faculties are like, I don't want to do anything anymore. All I want to do is sit in this. Wow, isn't he just the 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 picture of happiness over here? Oh. Oh, he is a really miserable, very unhappy individual from what I'm perceiving here. This is a lot of like anger towards I'm not sure who, but this is this is wild. Chair and drink Geritol, you know, and watch CNN and Fox. But I got $700 more money. And here's another thing. If you did do... And it, it, for some people, it could be far more than that. Tim is just, you know, he's he's angry and he's jealous is what I'm gathering. You know, and he's trying to keep pushing his agenda. And it's such terrible advice. And he needs those millions of years. He needs to catch all this again. He needs to get a viral. He's going to keep pushing this agenda do that and you took plan b you got to live to your 80 years old to ever surpass the money i'm getting that i would have collected on my social security uh 80 isn't that old i mean in respect that i work with a lot of patients who are in their 80s still driving cars still getting out still very active I've met very active pastors who are still actively working in their 70s and, and don't feel any of this misery that Tim feels. He's a very unhappy individual from what I'm sort of sensing just from this. By the time you get 80 is the only time you will surpass me. What are you doing at 80? What am I going to be doing at 80? You know how old 80 is? Look at an 80-year-old. Line 10 80-year-olds up. Light them up. Take a look at them. I don't know. We got two about to go for president of the United States. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess that says something. <laughs> but, Tim, we got octogenarians running this country. And you're making out like 80-year-olds are hard or old as heck or something. Sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. Oh, my goodness, Tim. I'm getting tired. You need to finish up. This is a long video. Take a look at them. Nobody's going to watch you. all this. That's going to be me. Now, would you rather be that and brag about $700? Or would you rather roll the clock back, go back to 62, say you were smart and you get rid of all that debt. And when you hit 62, all you had to do was have a little side hustle, making yourself a little bit of money. You got the free check coming in. You still got all your faculties. You're still crushing it. You're still strong. You're hitting the gym. You're eating right. You're thin still. You're and joint. you can still do all that and have a job. <laughs> it's like. He really dislikes work. Wow. Work shy, Tim. And your gizzards are still pretty good. Your legs are working good. You're not afraid to jump off the back of your tailgate of your truck. 
you're ready to hook up a camper or or go visit, you take a drive for three days, you're ready to crush it. You're ready to still play the uh, the whites instead of moving up to the to the uh, ladies' tee on the golf course, or maybe you're still playing the blues. I don't know, Tim. I got a bunch of people around here who are probably older than you who are like crushing it at pickleball like daily over here. And they look pretty happy. And they drive some pretty nice cars. <laughs> I'm sure they're crushing it more than you, Tim. This is this is not crushing it, okay? You're sitting outside a gas pump talking about how you're crushing it at 62 with all your crap in the car. I'm sorry. It doesn't look like you're crushing it, mate. <laughs> it's the honest opinion. Folks, your life is here but just a second. You are just a fog, a mist that's here for a minute and gone. You spend 20 years growing up as a baby where your parents take care of you till you get out of school. 20 years. You only live to be 75. That's the average age. It's actually I, I, uh, I've worked with patients. I don't know about 75. Maybe that's for men. I, I need to check the statistics. It seems a little young. Um, 20. I don't know. I lived to almost at 18, Tim. I mean, wow. This is a man who guess I guess he just got taken care of his whole life. Wow. Very, very work shy. Doesn't like responsibility. Okay, keep going. He's 73. So you got 20. Then you work uh, 30, 40, 50. You're 50 years old. Then you work to your 60. Okay. 40 years. You and? work. Dang. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of years of having to work. You want to work more? So now you're yeah. 60. Okay. You work 42 years. You get to 62 and you say, nah, I got to give it five, six, seven more years. I want that six, seven hundred dollars. My goodness. Then you get there and you're like, oh, man, you ever look at anything in hindsight? Everything's 2020, right? I played golf. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of people having 2020 hindsight from having listened to your terrible advice and have now wished they hadn't because you're selling a fake dream over here, Tim. And it's it's way more looking at the numbers. Your numbers are all skewed. It's 62. That's really early. You're not going to get anything. Oh, $700 a month. Promise you, Tim, for most people, maybe for you it was 700 but for a lot of other people, it's going to be way more than that. Okay? And like I said, you then have more years that you're working and you're building up more towards that Social Security as far as your average salary income is concerned. Some of these, you're talking about people dipping out in some of their highest years of earning money, literally. Bad advice. Golf today. And after I made that shot, I looked back and I said, ah, I should have used that other club. Everything is 2020 in hindsight. Don't make the mistake of giving your life away, your youth, your one life you get for a dollar. For uh, six so what are, what are people going to do? Do nothing their whole life or just grift off of people? Like you? How, how do people get to pay their bills then? Are, are you a trust fund baby? <laughs> you know how mad he is. He's getting angry because he's got people not giving him views anymore. Yeah, listen to me. Six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, you're going to regret it. If you wait to your full retirement age, I don't care if you don't have a pension. I don't care if you don't have any savings account. If you got no debt, you're golden. All you need is that. So don't listen to this poor man's advice. Listen to Doctor Weir. You know he might not be as charismatic as Tim. But I promise you, he's going to give you much better advice than this this gentleman who never kept, who never had any type of real career and certainly didn't work a 40-hour week in his life. Maybe one week selling some calls once back in 1983. No security and a side hustle. And then you just adjust your life. What is a place to live? As long as it's safe and the place you can recharge your battery and it's affordable, who needs uh, Tim, I always thought you were wild living in a camper out in the worst hurricane state in the country in Florida. And here his man's trying to tell other people how to live. And he's like literally one storm away from losing everything. Uh, come on, Tim. Be, be a little bit wiser with your advice. Be a little more judicious, sweetheart. 
needs all this mansions that people have, these McMansions. Now, look, don't get me wrong, folks. If you were born with a silver spoon or your parents died or somebody gave you a big inheritance or you won the lottery or you are just one of these people that just you were self-employed and you made bank. You, yeah, I have friends who are dentists who are self employed, actually. Believe it or not, they got that thing called a career. Guess what? They don't work Fridays. So, my friend who's a dentist works four days a week. Her practice is closed on Friday. She then leaves the city of Virginia Beach and goes to her second home up in the mountains of North Carolina. And no, she's not a trust fund baby. She just worked really hard as a, as a dentist. And she's in her 50s. But I guess, you know, she's in that prison job taking care of people's teeth. Oh. <laughs> Actually, dentistry is very hard, okay? And it's a stressful job. So I, I, I know that from my friend. But what I'm saying is that she has a career and she actually helps and takes care of people. And yes, her hours can be long. Her work can be difficult because of just bending over people constantly all day long isn't great for your back. So, I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I promise you, my friend is, you know, can't wait till she doesn't have to work anymore because it's, it's long haul work. But she also <laughs> is benefiting from her work and she does a lot of good for people. Yes, just, you know, gosh, I got a lot of friends who are very self-made people who just happen to have Good careers. Okay. Don't, don't be angry because people decide to go to school and get themselves careers and they actually like what they do. I love what I do. You sold houses all your life. You was uh, one of these 401s and these stock market people. And you just, you got out before it crashed. It's going to crash one day. <laughs> Again. And right. you, one thing you got, plenty of money. You got two homes. You got two cars. You got more money than you're ever going to spend. You're going to leave it to your kids and they can't even spend it. If that's you, hey, God bless you. But guess how many people have that kind of life? Guess what the masses are out there? Get a reality check. You know how many people have multiple jobs like I did growing up in all my life? Now, I did work for myself for 33 years. But most people don't. They don't have a county job, uh, an educational job, like an educator. They don't have all these jobs, these pensions, millions and thousands do, but there's tens of millions of others that are just skipping around all their life, picking up a job here, job there. And then when they get to be 62 and they're eligible for social security, but they don't have a great. Isn't this the guy that you want to listen to for your financial advice? Tim here, Tim, who skipped around. He, he talks about this business he had for 33 years. I think it was that that coupon thing I was telling you about. I and mean, he did like a few hours a day, a couple of days a week. Pretty much lived off his ex-wife from what I understand. Do you really want to listen to this guy? Is this the guy? The one who's jealous because other people actually maintained an education, got a career, and built up a life for themselves? This is a man who sounds very envious to me and sounds like he's a little bit dejected that that's not what he got because he just wanted to get that from just being Tim, you know, and now he's getting it through YouTube and his coffees and his videos that he's never seen is probably this much money as he did with some of the YouTube videos in his life. And, uh, he's fighting for it. A huge savings account. They don't have any pension, but look what I'm doing. I'm living large. I know people that are still working. They're just so in debt. They got so I'm sorry, Tim. There's a lot of people who would not agree that you're living large. Okay. I'm just sorry. <laughs> I mean, I not to say that, you know, I had a family of mine who were very well to do and they had an RV and they went after they sold their business for millions of dollars, they got themselves an RV and went across the States and traveled. So there's very wealthy people who do this stuff, but Tim, this is Tim's life. Okay. He's not then going to go to the retirement, you know, condo in Florida like my relatives did. <laughs> He's got none of that. He's got, this is it. He's got RV. And if he doesn't ma manage that, he might be having to sell that depreciating asset too. So they get a mountain of credit card debt. 
They got these fancy new cars. They got lawnmower payments. They got all this debt they're paying on, still paying a, a student loan. They're not even doing what they went to school to learn how to do. Or they defaulted on it. You got all kinds of roads you can go down in life. Promise you, I have friends of mine whose parents owned insurance businesses. They could buy anything they want. They made so much money from those insurance agencies. I mean, they literally could turn around and buy your truck in cash, Tim. They worked hard for years, but they could, when they got to retire, promise you, they're living large in a way that you would never understand. <laughs> but the road to take is the road to freedom. The road to take is the one is after your, your parents start taking care of you. That's the only free life you got when they took care of you. You didn't have to work or anything. You just went to school. You had fun. What about all your sugar mamas, Tammy and all those folks who took care of you too, Tim? That's all you've ever wanted is mom and dad taking care of you, some woman taking care of you, and now the YouTube audience taking care of you. It's just everyone takes care of Tim. Tim's special. Then you leave that and you go into that prison, that job, that prison job for 40 years or 50 years or 35 years, more than that, really. Then a little window opens up. You know, you're so insulting. The people that probably send you money or send you money for a coffee, it's probably coming from their prison jobs. I hope nobody sends this man any money for coffee because he just thinks, you know, he's laughing at you when he when he takes your blessings. A little light at the end of the tunnel that says, hey, here's a little, here's a little check, but don't take it. Don't take it. Keep going and you can get, you know, a little longer string. Don't bite that, don't bite that, that, that scam that you don't get more money. You get less because if you. Yeah. And, and then my prison job, you know, before I decided to go full time as a student and stuff and, you know, other incidents. But anyway, you know, I was getting uh, my payment on my other student loan debt. I was getting my grad school paid for. I was getting multiple bonuses. I used to get all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's a prison. It's terrible. Works terrible, all those benefits you get, you know. <laughs> he has no idea. See, Tim's never been there. So he doesn't know really how good it is in those prison jobs sometimes. <laughs> you take it and you lose a hundred grand and you don't collect for five years, like I'm gonna get, and you gotta live to be 80 years old just to get your money back. But where's where is the reward there? And you that five years from 62 to 67 is probably one of the most five years, most valuable five years, the last five years of your really being a younger adult, a mature adult, before you really go into being this old person and you're on your way out of here. And look how many people actually do die before they collect their first check or their full retirement check, or they get 70, they get at 67, mm. they start collecting two years later, they're dead. They're dropping like flies every day, folks. They're killing us with all the, the foods that we eat. And the world... That's your choice to eat those steaks and all those eggs, Tim. Just saying. Is crazy. You don't even know... You know we, whoever saw a pandemic, whoever thought it'd be something so crazy... Um, the people like in 1918 when like the Spanish flu came around like 100 years ago. Oh, Tim, please, please. Okay. They come around like every hundred years. Okay. Oh, just please. Could you please at least read the history? Something, please, before you open your mouth. Please, I beg you. Easy at shutting the entire economy down and then printing all this money and making all this high price oh, yeah printing all the money that you took advantage of because i understand you were also taking unemployment benefits with the extra federal unemployment while well, i worked as a nurse and didn't get anything okay people like me who worked in healthcare, we worked during that time tim you just lit out and got unemployment and you've just been sitting on free money since about 2020 and you just, you just cannot believe how much free money you've been, free in your mind.
but you owe him a sixty thousand dollars in EIDL, and you took it fraudulently, allegedly. And I think people have been reporting you for it, and as they should, and as we all should. And you should be investigated, and you should probably potentially have some consequence from it. So you keep putting on your videos talking about all this stuff because it's just evidence that the government gets to use in the case they get to build against you. Because they're coming after people who fraudulently took money. And allegedly, you potentially did. Prices for everything. <laughs> I got it. Who ever saw that? I'm excited. I had a iced coffee. Mm. But this is here to tell you. Get your Social Security at 62, have no debt, get you a side hustle, and start crushing it. Oh, yeah. That sounds like the worst advice ever. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I was like, that was... Oh, see, it always does that. Wow. That ended up being way longer than I wanted it to be. Mm. But if you ever get this far, drop me a dollar sign, a couple of dollar signs, actually, in the chat. Um, if you got this far on my uh, reaction to Tim's day. Gosh. I had a lot to say about that. Anyway, all right. I have nothing else to say. I'm sure he's put out another video, though. All right, guys. Like I said, uh, if you did like me, subscribe. I've been enjoying all of it. This didn't mean to be this long, but God, I had to roast Tim today. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.